Thank you all for coming this morning. I'm Mayor Todd Gloria. I'm here this morning with our Fire Chief Colin Stoll and our Police Chief Dave Nislight to update the public uh, about a mass casualty event here uh, in downtown San Diego that happened earlier this morning on B Street. Mass uh, Chief Stoll to give an update on the emergency response uh, and Chief Nislight to give an update on the police response to this incident. And I'll have some concluding comments. Chief Stoll. Thank you, Mayor. Um, our crews were originally dispatched for a traffic accident. Uh, we later got more information that, uh, that it was a multi-casualty incident, so we dispatched the appropriate resources for that. Our crews found, uh, obviously, a tragic event under the bridge, uh, started, initiated triage. Really, the way we handle these kind of emergencies is we, uh, we triage the patients, we set up a transportation group uh, and, and, and treatment on scene, and so we had three dead on scene that were triaged here. Uh, we transported two immediates and another three to the hospitals. We had a total of nine patients here today. Um, crews did the best they could with, with the resources there. Um, it, again, a very tragic emergency and incident that uh, impacts all of us and was, a, um, was, was just a, a tremendous, tremendous effort by both law enforcement and fire to, uh, to do their best. I'll turn it over to Chief Nislight. Yeah, good morning. Much like uh, fire personnel, we started receiving multiple 911 calls just after 9 o'clock this morning of a crash in the 1500 block of B Street. Uh, officers got there and saw multiple people down, multiple people struck by a vehicle, as Chief Stoll just mentioned. Uh, while we were there, uh, officers detained the driver of the vehicle involved in this collision. He self-identified himself, and at this moment, he is being detained for driving while impaired. Uh, this investigation will obviously continue as with any casualty type of an accident vehicle accident. Our accident investigation bureau will be out here. Uh, for those, we're going to ask you to stay. Please stay out of the area. This roadway will be closed for mostly the remainder of the day as our team uh, continues into the investigation. But uh, to those families that have passed, my deepest condolences. Um, and as far as the driver, um, he is being investigated for driving while impaired, um, and that will be handled by our units right now. Yeah, we were not following him. I can confirm that several minutes prior, uh, we did get a radio call about a vehicle that matches the description of the vehicle that's here at the scene. Um, and that will be part of the investigation. I don't want to go too much more into that as we need to interview those citizens that called in uh, to determine if this is the right vehicle. It appears to be, though. Yeah, he's a 71-year-old male. Uh, he did self-identify as the driver of the vehicle. And so what we know right now is we know the vehicle was westbound on B Street in the 1500 block, if you would. Uh, for whatever reason, it veered to the right, went completely up onto the sidewalk, struck the multiple pedestrians there, then came back onto the roadway and came back uh, to stop uh, in the very number one lane, so the lane closest to us here, just before you exit the tunnel, if you would. Um, and then he walked over and, from what I understand, actually was trying to render aid when he was contacted and self-identified as the driver of the vehicle. Excuse me? Uh, looks like a Volvo, uh, Volvo station wagon. Yeah, it, they're on the north sidewalk, if you would, underneath the uh, underpass. Uh, some tents, some belongings. Uh, I, can't, I don't know if people were sleeping, if people were sitting there. Uh, I have not been given that exact brief. As you can imagine, this was mostly right away uh, medical, um, and now we're switching over to be more of the criminal investigation. Is that a red zone underneath the bridge, or are there cars normally parked there uh, for school or what have I don't believe that's a red zone. I'd have to take a closer look. Sir, we heard the reports that it was children screaming, and you, you mentioned that he may have been being followed. Was it children screaming? The, the radio call prior to, yes, no, was not from, from what I understand, not terribly far away, maybe a mile, mile and a half away. Yes, I'm not involved in this at all. I have not heard that, no. Thank you, sir. Were all the victims of security complex? 
Uh, at this time, it appears so, yes. And how many, do you know how many have died from the I, I, I can't hear the question. How many have died and how many are still? Uh, I know there's been confirmed three that have been deceased at the scene. Uh, from talking to fire, uh, there's two that are in critical condition and then multiple others for a total of nine victims. I do not. I don't know if Chief Stoll does. Male or female? I don't. Was the uh, suspect taken into custody without trouble, or did he try to run away? Was there a no? He, he was extreme. He was cooperative. Did not try to run away. Like I said, self-identified himself as the driver of the vehicle. I'm sorry, with the road noise, I can't hear you. Do you know how many people were roughly sitting in this area? Did you I do not, no. Is there any visual evidence that that was the That will be obviously part of our investigation is looking the path where this initial call came from all the way to the scene here and at the scene. We'll be looking for any kind of video evidence. I, I, sorry, sir, I cannot hear you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, let's say he say, okay, the play's on the street. You know, is there, have there anything else that didn't happen there? Because I was talking to some of the people there, and they say that cars, uh, you know, have very fast in the morning. That will be something that we'll take a look at during this investigation. Just that the person, uh, the citizen that called him was concerned about this person's possible impairment. Yeah. Sir, was this a large homeless encampment that he was answering? Uh, I wouldn't call it a large homeless encampment. You had folks that had some of their belongings along the sidewalk, there, if you would. If you're familiar with 1500B, it's completely covered. Um, and so there's the, on the north side of the street is a pretty wide sidewalk. And people had, there were several tents up and people had their belongings there. Obviously with the, re with the weather, you know, last night it's cold and wet, and now obviously raining now, so people were trying to get out of the weather. Thank you, sir. And just to confirm, he did not flee, he, the suspect, he did not flee. He did not flee, and he is currently in custody, being detained for possibly driving while impaired. So after the incident, he got out of the car and rendered aid, is that correct? That's what we're being told. That will be something that we'll have to circle back with some of these witnesses to confirm that. At, it's too early right now to disclose any of that right now. I, I don't have his name with me. Obviously, this is a very fluid situation, and obviously more medical now switching over. Uh, I understand just what I was told is a 71-year-old male.